Life has existed on Earth for billions of years. You might take this fact for granted, but it is remarkable that the chain of life has never been severed. The life that exists now on Earth is the result of billions of years of chaotic forces acting upon it. The process of evolution itself is defined by death of organisms that are not suited to their environment. Therefore, a mass extinction happens when the Earth's environment rapidly changes and the life that once dominated gets pulled out of its element. A mass extinction is only considered a mass extinction when more than 75% of Earth's species die out. This has happened five times. In order they are the Ordovician, the Devonian, the Permian, the Triassic, and the Cretaceous extinction. In this video we will cover these events, why they happened, and what species were wiped out. 443 million years ago, life had yet to crawl onto land, but still flourished in the oceans. The first simple land plants evolved and spread across the continents. Early fish without jaws could be found, but the oceans were still dominated by invertebrates like trilobites. Trilobites swam along the ocean floor, and two-meter-long anomalocards like a gyrocasis swallowed up plankton in the open ocean. Ammonites became an important part of the ecosystem for the first time. About 85% of all of these creatures were about to die out. This is due to rapid cooling and then a rapid heating of the earth. Some theorize this was due to a global bloom of cyanobacteria caused by land plants putting phosphorus into the oceans. But the cause of this is up to debate. The Devonian period had a more developed land environment. Plants existed on land, but the most notable feature on land were giant mushrooms called protaxites. They shot up to 24 feet and were as wide as 3 feet. The oceans were much more interesting. The vertebrates had succeeded the invertebrates as the rulers of the ocean. They had done this by developing jaws to crush shells and bony armor to protect themselves. This new class of fish was called the placoderms. The biggest of these was Dunkleosteus. This fish was stoggy and as big as a modern grape mite. They had a bite force of 80,000 psi and were the first super predators. Coral reefs had also formed for the first time. They formed oasis in the oceans and created a great amount of biodiversity. Animals were also just about to take over land. Lobe-fitted fish like Tiktaalik could prop themselves up on land to avoid predators. They had primitive lungs and could breathe air. This would all come to an end when an unknown event caused 75% of all species to go extinct. Our leading theory is that something caused the oxygen levels in the water to go down. Placoderms were hit particularly hard, losing 96% of species. I know personally that I will be racking my head for a long time after this video because one of the five mass extinctions has no good explanation. Between the end of the Devonian and the end of the Permian, a lot happened. Sharks became the dominant predator in the oceans, trees evolved, amphibians evolved, ammonites took over from the arthropods and the amphibians, etc. But where we are at the end of the Permian, synapsids, the ancestors of mammals, ruled the land. Reptiles were important, but they were taking a backseat to creatures like the Gorgonopsids. These were apex predators that were similar to today's big cats. Dimetrodon was another important creature that stands out. The creature had a giant sail on its back and was a top predator. We don't know what Dimetrodon's sail was for. Our theories range from heat regulator to a mating display. 250 million years ago, an event called the Great Dying happened. This was caused by a volcanic eruption in northern Pangaea that lasted thousands of years and ejected 1.5 cubic million kilometers of lava. It killed 9 in 10 marine animals and 7 in 10 land animals. The Permian extinction is the worst of the five mass extinctions. Nearly all of life was wiped out and entire branches on the tree of life were ripped off. The Triassic happened immediately after the Permian and is notable for several reasons. The Triassic was a period of recovery after the Great Dying. Synapses that survived the Permian extinction still ruled the Earth for now, but they did not have as strong of a grip as they once did. The Triassic was a time of great experimentation. During the Triassic, future rulers of the Earth would evolve, like dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and mammals. 
We also have much less successful experiments, like Tenistrophius, which had necks longer than the rest of their body and would make a nice meal for a predator. Towards the end of the period, dinosaurs competed to be the rulers of the Earth, but they would still have to survive an extinction event before they reached their true glory. 201 million years ago, the Trias extinction would occur, and it's thought to be the event that would allow the dinosaurs to take over from the synapsids. This event wiped out 76% of Earth's species. The Triassic extinction's cause is hotly debated. One popular theory is climate change. If you have any better ideas, please tell me. 66 million years ago, dinosaurs were the undisputed rulers of the Earth. Tyrannosaurus rex hunted Triceratops in North America. Velociraptor was eating rodents in Mongolia. Pachycephalosaurus was button heads. It was a good time to be a dinosaur. An asteroid struck into the Yucatan Peninsula and killed other dinosaurs, except for birds. When the asteroid impacted into the Yucatan Peninsula, it caused tsunamis that were miles high and shot up an ash cloud that blocked out the sun and killed all plants. The total 75% of all species were wiped out. The impact brought an end to the age of dinosaurs and allowed mammals to take over Earth. This was the last major extinction event in Earth's history and is the most well studied and remembered. What we should take from this is that life is very persistent. An extinction event today would make life very difficult, obviously. But I think life would persist through it. If humanity was faced with a mass extinction, we would probably just go underground for a while and then emerge once the rough patch evened out. Either that or we'd go to into space, which is not a great plan now that I'm thinking about it.